Well, hey guys, happy March 1st. February flew by, of course, the shortest month of the year. And in this video, per usual, I'm gonna share with you products that I loved throughout the month of February, new discoveries, and one, mm, I wouldn't say complete fail, but rather slight disappointment. Uh, I hope you guys had a great February. This past month, I did a lot of videos related to different devices and concern that you guys have as to whether or not they cause facial fat loss or harm the skin in any way. So check those videos out if those are topics that have been of interest to you. And of course, we went to a lot of stores and checked out new skincare. Behind the scenes, I always try things out. And then those of you who enjoy watching my vlogs, I'll often share those updates with you guys along the way. Now for me, this past month, I started using a new shampoo and conditioner that you guys have been telling me about for a while now. Y'all know I like to use anti-dandruff shampoos. Even though I don't have dandruff, I find the ingredients are just beneficial overall for my scalp, reducing scalp itch. They have anti-inflammatory properties. Zinc pyrithione is a great anti-dandruff ingredient. Head and shoulders is always what comes to mind when we're talking about an anti-dandruff shampoo with zinc pyrithion. But, but, I recently tried out the Dove Dermacare Shampoo uh, for dryness and itch relief. This is a zinc pyrithion shampoo. It does have fragrance as a side note. So if you're allergic, you'd have to avoid this. But man, I really have liked this a lot. Now, to get the maximum benefit out of a shampoo like this, actually out of any shampoo, truthfully, you want to make sure that you are directing the lather to your scalp. And make sure when you shampoo your scalp that you really get the lather to all surfaces of the scalp. Don't just, you know, scrub up here. Make sure you get the back of your scalp, the sides, especially behind the ears. These can be really stubborn areas, not only for dandruff, but just for oiliness. Now, this particular shampoo by Dove with zinc pyrithione, it's very moisturizing. It has coconut oil, shea butter. Those are good ingredients for the hair strands themselves. And even though it's scalp directed, when you shampoo, inevitably some of the shampoo, you know, it does, traverse the strands, right? And that's beneficial in removing pollutants and dirt and dust that may have settled on your hair strands, but it also can be very drying. So having these moisturizing ingredients in there is helpful. And they're also helpful to address scalp dryness and itch. I also have been using the corresponding conditioner. I'm one of those people, if there's a shampoo, it has to have a matching conditioner and I have to use them together. I don't cross pollinate shampoos and conditioner. Conditioner for me and for, for many people is to help neutralize the charge on the hair strand that comes about as a result of rinsing that shampoo out. That can leave the hair prone to tangling and brittleness. So to what extent you need the zinc pyrithione now going on your strands, it doesn't really make sense. I will say though, some people who have who do have dandruff, they have maybe more of a textured hair type. But for those folks, using conditioner up closer to the scalp can, can be beneficial for reducing tangles and breakage. But for me, if I use conditioner up here, and for people who have hair like mine, if you use conditioner up here, it kind of leaves the hair heavy and greasy. Direct it to the ends if you have a hair type like me. But for people who have more of a textured hair, I can see the benefit of having the zinc pyrithione in there in the conditioner. Anyway, I've used both of them together for you know going on over a month now and i use these sh this shampoo and conditioner probably i would say every third night and every time i use that i just find that my hair is very manageable the next day it's uh easy to style clean bouncy lots of volume not weighed down not frizzy not brittle knowing i was going to film this video last night i used the, both the shampoo and conditioner to wash my hair and normally i apply the moroccan oil uh, styling cream to my hair, just one small pump, but I purposely left that out just so you could see what my hair looks like after using it. Um, no, no heat to my hair or anything. I just let it air dry and it's not greasy, it's not brittle, it's not weighed down. The conditioner does have silicones in it, which I love in my hair care products because they do impart some shine and gloss to the hair. I think that's advantageous in this formula. Highly recommend these if you have a dry scalp, if you have a lot of itch in your scalp, if you have eczema and scalp itch, although again, they do have fragrance in them. So if you're allergic to fragrance, you would have to avoid. The other thing I love about these um, is they don't have those preservatives that a lot of people end up becoming allergic to, especially people who have eczema, the isothiazolinones. That was always my gripe with head and shoulders, which I love, but it has the isothiazolinones in it, or some of the head and shoulders, zinc pyrithione shampoos do at least. 
These do not from Dove. So love that, they're really nice. And I personally love the scent. It's not headache inducing, but it's nice, it's fresh, it's clean. Okay, the next product, it was a bit of a fail for me. Not necessarily a fail. I continue to use it, it works, it's effective, like whatever, whatever. It's the Peach and Lily Ginger Melt Cleansing Oil. Now, I've seen a lot of people hype up this cleansing oil. Um, it was gifted to me, I did not buy it. And I was a bit like, okay, yeah, cleansing oil, so what? Like, not magical, not a, a sensorial experience that takes me to a magical place in my head. Not that whatsoever, just kind of blah, kind of bland. So this particular cleansing oil has sunflower seed oil, grape seed oil, it has pineapple fruit extract, which for some people might actually end up being irritating. It also has some anti-inflammatory ingredients, licorice root, centella asiatica, but overall it's just very neutral. The texture of it is not particularly oily. It's more of like almost a shampoo texture. There's a bit of a grip to it. It feels silicone heavy. It's not in terms of the ingredients, but it feels very silicone heavy. There's grip to it. There's viscosity there. And my experience using it, it has a bit of an odd odor. Now I um, shared this with you guys in a vlog and I got a lot of comments from people who say they absolutely love this. And I have to say, you know, it's not bad. It, it, it does the job. It's just $35. My favorite cleansing oils, <laughs> Um, I really love the Hadalabo cleansing oil. That was like one, my gateway into cleansing oils. Um, and I continue to repurchase that over and over again. And I also really like the Cozy Speedy Softy Mo cleansing oil. Both of those are like, I wanna say 13 bucks on Amazon. The, the I think both of them, I know for sure the Hadalabo one. You can buy a, a refill pouch so you don't necessarily have to keep repurchasing the same plastic bottle over and over again, which I also really like. Um, I, those I love, you know, um, those I love. This was not like bad in comparison to those. It just didn't bring anything else to the table. Peach and Lily, their products are okay. Nothing I've tried from them has been frankly bad or you know faulty, but nothing has particularly wowed me. They are also the parent company of Peach Slices, a more drugstore targeted brand, which I love. Maybe I'm biased towards drugstore products. And one of the reasons why I think this cleansing oil is so viscous too is one of the first ingredients is glycerin. Glycerin can make a product kind of sticky depending on, of course, how it's formulated as a whole. So maybe that's why it's a bit thick uh, and not as oily. It does emulsify just fine and it does rinse off well. I had no issue uh, using it to remove eye makeup, water resistant sunscreen. I mean, it, it performed like a cleansing oil should. I did see some reviews on their website, some of the two star reviews and one star reviews on their website. People were saying, oh, it didn't take my makeup off. For me, it worked well for eye makeup and water resistant sunscreen. Speaking of eye makeup, I tried a new mascara this past month that I love. Um, it's the highly rated Lash Extensions Tubing Mascara by Milani. I discovered tubing mascaras a few years ago when I tried the Thrive Cosmetics uh, tubing mascara, which I really, really love. Um, tubing mascara is basically the mascara is put out onto the lashes uh, so that it surrounds the lash as a tube and it, it nicely coats all the way around. And I find with tubing mascaras, because they do that, they're really good at elongating lash, giving you a little bit extra length. They build out the lash better, in my experience. And I love the look that you get with the tubing mascara. And then when you go to take them off, these little tubes come off efficiently. You know, I kind of enjoy that. The Thrive Cosmetics one, I'm considering the holy grail tubing mascara because it's the best one that I've ever tried before. Thrive Cosmetics one, you pretty much have to buy it from their website. So Milani came out with one that is kind of trying to, to step up to the plate. Like I have no mascara on right now. Here's the wand, not much to look at. No mascara. Mascara. Pretty much has the same applicator as the Thrive one. They look the same, feel the same. The formula is good with the Milani one. It does elongate. It does wrap around the lashes nice, nicely. 
Um, but the Milani one is a bit more clumpy, which some people really like. You know, some people really like a little bit of clump to the mascara. So the Milani one is a bit clumpier. The Milani one on the bottom lashes, which I don't typically use it there, but I have it there today. The Milani one on the bottom lashes, as the day goes on, it does fleck a bit. And I do find overall that the Milani formula is a bit drier. I didn't notice that in the beginning, but I've been using it now for a couple of weeks. And as I continue to use it, I do find that the formula is getting a bit drier. Now, the Milani mascara is $13.99. It's convenient, you can pick it up at Target, Walmart, probably the drugstores too, I haven't really looked there, but Milani's, anywhere Milani's carried. So convenient, conveniently within reach when you're out running errands, as opposed to Thrive where you need to go onto their website and order it. The Thrive Cosmetics Mascara is $25 and you can get it. Now, if you're buying the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara just one time, you're gonna have to pay shipping and handling. Alternatively, you could have them ship it to you every three months, which is the frequency with which I recommend you replace your mascara regardless. So you could have it auto delivered to you every three months. And in that case, they will give you free shipping. So the Milani one is not a complete replica by any means of the Thrive formula, but it's a nice alternative, more accessible and convenient uh, when you're out running errands to pick it up, less expensive, but drier, more fallout and a bit clumpier. Let me know in the comments if you have tried it. I really, really like it. Now, this is something I have had for like two years now and only recently started using. And oh my gosh, I love it. It is my iRobot Roomba robot vacuum cleaner. And I know these have been around a while and you know, I'm kind of late to the party, but I have to say this thing I adore. It's kind of like a little pet. It buzzes around, it, it does a really good job. And then it goes back to its little docking station once it's all finished. Like, it's really cool. Um, yeah, this came from Costco. Uh, I've been really happy with it. It does a really good job. It's easier to empty than like my regular vacuum cleaner. And honestly, it does a better job. I've heard though that the batteries on these don't last that long. I've only recently started using it a lot. It's just I kind of, it's like, oh, I should fire that thing up. Here goes over by the, over by the workout caddy. I really like it because as you guys know, I have eczema and I really try and stay on top of vacuuming, dusting, because that helps to cut down on dust mites, which can flare not only eczema, but if you have asthma, seasonal allergies. So regular vacuuming, dusting, you know, it's something I have to stay on top of, but I'm busy, I'm not like, always remembering to go run the vacuum cleaner around. So this is really handy because I can just run it on a you know, daily or every other day basis. And it actually does a really good job for my apartment. You know, I have a small apartment. It does well on hard floors, carpets, rugs. It does well on the tile. It does a good job picking up the daily dust. It's good for, you know, tidying up purposes. One thing I don't care for about it though, is that it doesn't go in a even pattern. It just kind of randomly goes here and there. It's very random in terms of where it goes and it, it bumps into a lot of things and it reorients itself okay. Um, so it's kind of, you know, so for example, if you plan to use this to vacuum your home before like guests come, then you're gonna have areas where it has not gone. It's more of the kind of thing that you have go around your, your house, apartment or whatever, every couple of days as maintenance. Now, that being said, I have a small apartment and me using it this frequently, it's kept everything to where I don't actually have to run my vacuum. It's really easy to empty. Now they have newer iRobots now where the charging station has like a, um, container, a receptacle, where the robot empties into, I don't think I would like that because I don't like, that's one thing about a vacuum I don't like is having all the stuff stored in the canister and having to look at it, it just grosses me out. I would rather have the iRobot go around and then I empty it out, you know, every, like every time that it goes. So I wouldn't want to have that receptacle, but that is a newer feature. One thing that it got caught up in a couple of times for me, it wasn't a big deal, it was easy to fix. Um, I have my running shoes by my treadmill 
and if the shoelaces were out, it would kind of go over the shoelaces and then the shoelace would get stuck. And I'd have to take out the wheels, which is easy to do, and you know, unwind the shoelaces and everything. So, you know, for example, if you have cords out, it might go over those and start getting caught up in them. That can be a pain. So not right for everybody, but for me, I have loved this thing. And it does, it, you know, it's made keeping on top of dust in the carpets and on the floor a lot easier for me. Last but not least, this month I finished up the audiobook I've been listening to called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I really enjoyed this book. It's a deep dive on how critical sleep is for our overall health. And it you know, goes into all of the issues as a society that we have with uh, our sleep and all the things that are kind of jeopardizing good quality sleep in our life. Lights, our schedule, some people just are not you know, naturally inclined to be early risers, they're night owls, and our modern lifestyle is not really conducive to that. Most people have to get up super early in the morning. Um, and, and so I really enjoyed this book. It's really a deep dive though on, on you know, the science behind sleep. So if you're not interested in that, um, you may find it a bit dry. Um, I do think to a certain extent, some points that the author makes are a bit overstated. You know, association does not prove causation. So I do think that he overstates some things. Um, but what I really like the most about this book is that at the end, like the last chapter, he gives these very practical tips for um, tr you know, better sleep. Not, not a remedy, of course, for any underlying sleep disorder that you might have, not a replacement for medical advice, just very practical sleep hygiene tips, uh, prioritizing sleep, you know, kind of much like we all know that we need to be doing some type of exercise for heart health, for bone health, but even though you know you need to do it, you know that it's you know, good for your health, it's the habit of it and making it a habit uh, there are a lot of things that can throw you off track. It was great to listen to. I really enjoyed it. I listened to it on Audible. I really enjoyed the author reading it. I'm sure you could get it from the library though. Currently, now that I finished that, I'm listening to Winter Solstice. I just started like a few days ago. Uh, Rosamund, Ros Rosalind Pilcher, I love. And I'm also reading Moby Dick from the library, which is really good. Shout out to the library. Any way, shape, or form I can influence you to utilize your library ser services, um, you bet I'm going to do that. That and uh, influence you to not put Q-tips in your ear and to wear sunscreen. Those are like some of my main, my main influencer flexes here <laughs> in terms of behaviors. Um, but yeah, go to your library, look for these books. Um, or go online to, to the library on, on the websites. They, you know, you can get many books downloaded with your library card for free to your e-reader. You can get them audiobooks as well for, you know, with your library card for free. Yeah, make use of the library. Tons of wonderful free resources. Anyway, guys, we are onward and upward to a new month, March. Before you know it, summer will be here and then it'll be the holidays. But let me know how your February went, if you enjoyed it. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. If you like this video, on the end slate, I'm going to put my January favorites and fails video if you wanna check that one out next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.